Hey, hope everybody's doing great. Today I'm talking about sleep tracking, using specific technology to improve your sleep and really to give you great feedback, biofeedback on how you're sleeping and factors you can control to improve the depth and the quality of your sleep. And so as we look at this topic, we understand that sleep allows our brain to detox. This is why sleeping is so important. We talk a lot about on my channel how fasting helps our body go through this process of, of autophagy where we break down older decaying cellular organelles. Where, well, sleep is really important for brain autophagy, for the brain cells and neuron cells themselves. And we have these specialized cells called glial cells, which are basically like the lymphatic slash immune system of the brain. And uh, the lymphatic system really ramps up while we're sleeping. So it's very important for flushing out dirty fluid, uh, different molecules from inside the brain tissue, and bringing in new clean cerebrospinal fluid to replace it. And that's important for us to think sharply and quickly, for our ability to um, process information quickly, for our mood, very, very important for good mood. If we're not flushing out toxic debris, we're going to end up typically very lackadaisical, lethargic, more irritable, more anxious, more depressed. So sleeping is super critical for our overall health. And we've all experienced what it feels like when we don't sleep well. And so 10 major causes of poor sleep. Well, number one would be just having a poor sleep schedule, going to bed really late, going to bed at erratic times. Our body really responds well to going to sleep at you know, roughly the same time, and ideally earlier in the evening, the better. Um, bad nutrition, blood sugar imbalances. If we're eating a lot late at night, if we've got um, a high carbohydrate diet that's causing blood sugar imbalances, those are going to be problems that are going to affect our sleep. Nutrient deficiencies like magnesium, for example, is a really common one that will affect our sleep quality. If we are exposed to bright lights, right? So bright lights at night, going to going to suppress our melatonin secretion. We're not going to be able to sleep really well. Stress, for under chronic stress, I mean, most people understand that. That's going to keep us thinking. We're going to have more anxiety and uh, you know, just trouble falling asleep. Chronic pain, obviously, uh, can cause us not to sleep well. Sleep apnea, if we're not breathing well at night, uh, this is going to cause us to wake up often because we're not getting oxygen. We're hypoxic. A hiatal hernia. So a lot of times people will experience heart palpitations at night and oftentimes because they have a hiatal hernia where the stomach, part of the stomach, the, the upper part has jumped up over the diaphragm and food is kind of backing into that. And it can also put pressure, physical pressure on the lungs and on the heart and can contribute to heart palpitations. A lot of people wake up with heart palpitations. Overactive thyroid activity. So if we have hyperthyroidism, that can cause heart palpitations as well, excessive sweating and restlessness. And then gut infections, particularly parasites, uh, become very, very active at night, particularly between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. So if you're waking up consistently in that time period, having trouble falling back asleep, you are um, grinding your teeth. That's another common issue that could be related to magnesium deficiency and also to parasites and gut infections. So these are all things that need to be addressed when we're looking at helping you improve your overall sleep quality. Now, when we sleep, what we know is that <clears throat> we have four different stages. And so the first three stages are called non-rapid eye movement. And this is kind of what happens as we start to drift into a good sleep cycle, okay? And normally we're drifting into these, you know, these, these stages uh, for five or six cycles, okay, throughout the night. And so we've got the first stage of non-REM sleep. Then the second stage, which is first and second stage are considered light sleep. And then stage three is considered deep sleep. And deep sleep is really key for our immune system, for human growth hormone, for repairing our body, our tissues. So if you've exercised, um, you know, just the wear and tear of the day, that stage three is really, really important for that. And uh, that's also when we, we're waking from that, that's when we feel really groggy. And then we get into stage four, which is more for mental repair. And that's the REM sleep, so rapid eye movement sleep. And uh, that's where we dream. And that's all a part of basically, you know, the re repairing uh, brain tissue. So we get more 
enhancement of uh, synapses, which basically are little gaps between neurons that help reinforce memory and learning during the REM sleep, right? So it's very important that we get that as well. Um, each cycle lasts around an hour and a half. Uh, and then, you know, we'll move into a new cycle from there. So we should have that hour and a half cycle and move into a new cycle. And you're going to go through five or six of these throughout the night. And you can actually track how you're doing and what you're doing with this. And so that's where, you know, this device comes in. I really am a huge fan of what we call the Aura Ring. So this is a great device and it's an app and a ring. So I wear this ring on my finger and, um, and I've got it on right here. You can see that if you're looking at me. And, uh, you know, it tracks. And so you'll actually be able to see over time what your readiness score is, what your sleep score is. So the total amount of sleep you had, your time in bed, what your resting heart rate looked like, how much deep sleep you got, how much REM sleep you got. Okay. And so uh, you can look at readiness, all kinds of things like that. So this is just an example. This isn't actually my data, but this is an example here. Um, and normally I'm looking at this on the left. Normally you wouldn't have six hours and seven minutes of REM and 13 minutes of deep. Normally, like for me, I usually am getting somewhere around hour and a half to two hours of deep sleep and then like an hour, hour and a half of REM sleep. That's usually a pretty good night and you're getting, and I'm getting a lot of light sleep as well. It's all part of the process. And so you're able to track this and then you're getting a sleep score based on that. Like in this particular case, it's an 81. Now you also get a readiness score, which looks at your resting heart rate, your heart rate variability. You can see this person had a 14 millisecond heart rate variability. And I'm going to talk more about that. That's actually not great. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the importance of heart rate variability in just a second. But overall, it takes into account your respiratory rate, your body temperature, your resting heart rate, your activity balance. Um, your sleep balance, your heart rate variability, and you come up with a readiness score, which is like, how ready are you for stress? How resilient is your body today, right? Or how, how resilient are you going to be to the stresses that you're going to encounter today? So it's really cool from that perspective. You're really able to see that. Now, let's talk a little bit about heart rate variability. So this is measured from basically zero to 100 millisecond. Uh, um, that's the, the, the chart, zero to 100 milliseconds. That's the range. And it's basically the variability of your beat to beat heart, your heart rate beat to beat. <clears throat> so you have a very monotone, meaning that you've got like the same tone when you're under more stress, okay? Very little variability there. So when you're exercising really intensely, your heart rate variability is gonna be very low, like under 10 and you know, really like one, maybe zero, one, somewhere in that range, as opposed to when you're meditating, when you're really super relaxed, very, very calm state, or even, you know, really in, in deep sleep, you can get the heart rate variability up to, you know, 60, 70, 80. Um, let me take a quick look at what mine was. I, I, I uh, so last night, just taking a look at this last night, my heart rate variability was, I, had, I got it up to 94 at one point. So my max was 94. My average was 36, right? Which isn't bad as, as far as an average. You typically want it up above 25 for sure, okay? And then the higher you get it, the better. <clears throat> so if you can get your average in the 50s, you know, that's fantastic. And obviously trying to push for higher periods uh, as well. And so when you're in more deep sleep, you're going to ha end up with higher amounts of a higher heart rate variability. And you can see the benefit is greater sense of well-being, better physical performance, you're more relaxed, you're more recovered, okay? As opposed to low heart rate variability, you tend to exhaust faster, you tend to have more health issues, <clears throat> and um, just not, not being resilient to the stresses of the day. So we can actually measure that with this. Now, tips for a great night's sleep, these are things that, you know, you're going to want to be doing in order to optimize your sleep, okay? And by the way, I just wanted to mention that the Aura Ring, right, which I was showing here, okay, again, this ring and you get an app on your phone, 
Um, I, have a, I have a discount coupon below. It's actually, uh, you just go follow the link. There's no coupon to apply, but it gives you 20% off uh, the ring that you desire to purchase. So check that out as well. I thought it was a great investment. My wife and I use this. We talk about our sleep scores, our readiness scores every single day. It really helps us understand where each other, where we're at. It's been good for our relationship. You know, if we need to go to bed early that night, um, you know, is it a good day to possibly talk about a more stressful activity, you know, or more stressful uh, circumstance or something like that. So it really helps, you know, it's really good to get this sort of biofeedback. So I'd highly recommend it. Um, but now let's talk about tips for great night's sleep. So make sure you got your room cool. So I typically have an overhead fan and then I'm putting my, my room at somewhere around 65 degrees. Uh, my wife and I seem to sleep better uh, around that temperature. You want to keep your room as dark as possible. I'm also a fan of using a good sleep mask that covers your eyes. You want to, you want to have as much uh, as minimal light exposure as possible to get the best melatonin secretion and the best sleep. You want to avoid caffeine within eight hours of sleeping. So ideally keeping your caffeine to like the morning hours. Don't eat within three hours of sleeping. So if you're going to bed at 10, you'd want to finish dinner by seven ideally for the best night's sleep. Get sun exposure during the day. So what you do during the day is very important for how you're going to sleep at night. Getting good sun exposure during the daytime, very, very important. You can also use like red light therapy. Um, I've done a video on that previously. If it's like really overcast, and you're not able to get in the sun. But if the sun is out, uh, absolutely <clears throat> get in the sun during the day. Even if it's just five minutes, it's going to be very good for your circadian rhythms. Make sure you're exercising regularly. It really helps with good sleep, but don't exercise late at night. So that's not a good idea because that's going to increase your sympathetic nervous system and that's not going to allow you to wind down and sleep well. So I recommend exercising sometimes, certainly, you know, within three to four hours of, uh, of going to sleep or earlier, right? So earlier, the better. Um, if you can't until the evening, then do it, you know, six, seven o'clock, but um, but not any later than that. Now, avoid bright light after sunset. That's important. So keep your, your house dim, turn on red lights, things like that. That's important. Wind down at 9 p.m. I always tell people, you don't want to have goals after 9 p.m. Because if you have goals after 9, that's going to stimulate the part of your nervous system that does not allow you to fall asleep effectively, right? It's going to stimulate your fight or flight system. A lot of people will say they get a second wind and that's because they're releasing cortisol and dopamine, and these sorts of uh, neurotransmitters, adrenaline that give you energy and mental clarity. And that's not going to allow you to sleep well. So you're going to feel the effects of it the next day. You might feel good at night and might be productive that evening, but you're going to feel the, the effects of it the next morning and you're not going to be able to heal and recover as well. So really important that you start winding down by 9 p.m. So you can get a really good sleep. Um, always good to light audit your bedroom, use blackout curtains, a sleep mask, cover alarm clocks. A lot of people don't understand that, but those alarm clocks can really beam out light at you. Co cover other minor surfaces of light with electric tape. So you can, like if you're going to a hotel room or something like that, um, bring some electric tape so you can cover up, you know, any source of light. Like a lot of times the air conditioning unit will have like a big beam of light that comes out of it. <clears throat> this, this is going to affect your ability to get deep sleep. You can also remove certain electronics if they're really making, uh, you know, if, they're, if they have a lot of light coming out of them. So it's important. Keep your room as dark as possible. And then you can see this example. This person has a eye mask on. Now, when you wake up in the morning, this is actually really important as well. Do not hit the snooze button. So a lot of people do this. But when you hit the snooze button, if you've got an alarm that goes off, that's going to signal cortisol and stress hormones, right? Now, your stress hormones are always... They're going to be a little bit higher in the morning. That's normal. And that's what gives us wakefulness. But when we hit the snooze, when it goes off and then we like stay in bed, that actually suppresses that cortisol release. So we won't actually feel as energetic and productive in the morning. So it's actually much better to get out of bed and get going and then have a good process for winding down and going to sleep later. Um, even taking a power nap is really good, but don't take it too close. Like you'd want it to be six hours or, you know, like not, not within six hours of going to sleep and you want it to be short, you know, somewhere between five to 30 minutes <clears throat> max. Okay. So five minutes of closing your eyes and at most up to 30 minutes 
for a nap would be, would be good. Now, some other things you can do. So taking a good quality nighty night, uh, like a good herbal tea like this, this nighty night that has things like valerian, passion flower, um, lemon balm, stuff like that. Very, very helpful for the body. Uh, these sorts of herbs are GABA agonists. That means that they help promote GABA, which gives us relaxation and calmness. So really huge fan of that. You can drink the herbal teas. And if you want a higher dose, you can, uh, you can get supplements like our Relax Calm here, which has got all those things, passion flower and uh, valerian root and um, skull cap that's in there. Um, these things all drive blood flow into the brain. They help a deeper, more relaxing sleep. They're GABA agonists, which means, again, they help calm the brain. You've got magnesium and calcium in there to help with uh, reducing muscle tension. A lot of people are restless at night, um, can really help reduce that. And again, promote really deep restorative sleep. So this is one of my top supplements that I go to for people to help them improve their overall sleep quality. A lot of people with fibromyalgia really rave about this sort of product right here. It's RelaxCom because again, helps re reduce pain, muscle tightness, and promotes deep sleep so they can recover and heal better. So really good. And then a lot of times I'll stack it with this uh, magnesium lotion. So this is a magnesium with melatonin lotion that you can put on your skin and that's going to get more magnesium into the system. And so many people are magnesium deficient. If you're having trouble sleeping, I would definitely look to address magnesium levels. And then it also gets the melatonin in there too, which, uh, which is our sleep hormone and very good for our immune system. So adding that, stacking those, you can use one or the other, you know, but you can also stack them to really improve overall sleep quality. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of this video. I'll have links below, the link for the Aura Ring, a link for a more detailed article that explains a lot more about this topic as well as scientific references on it. So you'll be able to, to read through that. <clears throat> and then links to these two products that Relax Calm and the Magnesium with Melatonin. So you can check those out as well. Hopefully you guys, again, got a lot out of this training. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. And hit the bell button. So that way you get, uh, you get all my uploads, immediate, you get immediate notification for them. So uh, you can jump right in. And I would love to hear any, any sort of questions, comments you guys have. Always appreciate you guys. And we'll see you on a future online training. Be blessed.